Bad news, man. Kings only have a 1.5% chance of making the playoffs this year. So you're saying there's a chance. Welcome to episode 20 of the Royal Report with Calvin and Barry, a Sacramento Kings sports talk show. Another emotional roller coaster week as Tyrese Halliburton goes down with a left knee injury. Fortunately for Kings fans, the MRIs have revealed no ligament damage. However, he will be sidelined through the rest of the season. I hope you all had a wonderful week of Kings basketball and celebrated all the festivities uh, safely with your friends and loved ones. And thank you all for joining us on another episode. That's right, welcome in everybody. Episode 20 here on the Royal Report on today's show. Marvin Bagley makes his return. The Kings actually can play defense and Barry and I will break down a big time matchup tonight against the San Antonio Spurs, a must win situation for the Kings, but Barry, let's get it started with our highlights from around the league. So two teams the Kings actually defeated this week played each other. Uh, the Pacers faced the, or the Thunder this week and they beat them down. <laughs> 57 point margin of victory. It is the largest home loss in NBA history. They were up by 67 at one point in that game, uh, largest margin um, in the last 20 years. So pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, amazing. There have been some serious, serious blowouts in the NBA this year. A uh, couple games this week that were not blowouts. The Milwaukee Bucks and the Brooklyn Nets faced off in a two game series on Sunday and Tuesday, giving fans a taste of what the postseason could be like and it was delicious. The Bucks went, ended up winning both games, Sunday's game by three points in an epic duel between Giannis and Kevin Durant. Giannis finished with 49 points. Durant had 42 of his own as the former MVPs both guarded each other down the stretch in a thrilling, thrilling game. The Bucks won 117 to 114. Game two on Tuesday night was another close one with the Bucks rallying in the fourth quarter to win by six, 124 to 118, and overcoming 38 points from Kyrie Irving and another 32 from Durant. The teams have played three times this season and the games have been decided by 11 points combined. Barry, it's gonna be a very, very entertaining playoff series if those two face up. It definitely will. And uh, speaking of Kevin Durant, a former teammate of his, Steph Curry is breaking all sorts of records this season. He just recently set a new record for three pointers in a month with 96. He now owns four out of the top five of those records. Um, one of them goes to James Harden with 82, but Steph Curry continues to show the world why he is the best three pointer or three point shooter of all time. Unbelievable what he's doing. Speaking of breaking records, Russell Westbrook is continuing to put his name all over the NBA record books. Westbrook had another phenomenal week. He had a double, triple, double performance this week. His first one was a record setter. 14 points, 21 rebounds, and 24 assists. It is the second game in Westbrook's career in which he has posted 20 rebounds, and 20 assists or more in the same game. That's only been done three times in NBA history and Westbrook has done it twice. Not to outdo himself, he came out a couple nights later and put up a 29 point, 12 rebound and 17 point triple double. Beal and Westbrook now have the Wizards in the 10th spot in the Eastern Conference and in the play in tournament as of today, thanks to their stellar play as of late. And Westbrook himself is making history. He tied Oscar Robertson for the most triple doubles in NBA history, regular season and playoffs combined with 189 for his career. That is simply outstanding. Uh, we're gonna have to start calling him uh, the big R pretty soon <laughs> as he, he goes ahead and breaks all of the big O's records. It is just simply uh, incredible what he is doing. 
Another record uh, worth mentioning, Carmelo Anthony has broken into the top 10 in scoring, all-time scoring. Uh, you know, I know everyone's been paying attention to LeBron slowly moving up that ladder and, you know, hoping or, or a lot of people thinking he will eventually top that list. But it is a notable mention that Carmelo Anthony, one of the best scorers in NBA history, has finally moved into that top 10. Yeah, not bad for a guy who only played 10 games for Houston just a couple years ago and it seemed like his career might be coming to a close. Now the question is, how long will he play? That's all we got for League Highlights. We'll be right back to break down a perfect 4-0 week for the Sacramento Kings in your week cap. We'll be right back. Now the thing I'm looking at on the defensive end, Chris, this is the, this is the risk. The is a Welcome back, everyone. The Sacramento Kings defied odds this week, going a perfect 4-0 despite not having De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton for most of the week, and Harrison Barnes all out. Big contributions from Marvin Bagley, who made his return, as well as DeLon Wright, and some great defensive play holding their last three opponents to under 100 points really fueled the Kings' perfect week this week. How typical of this team that has been so up and down all year long. Just when you think that it's just about over, here they are just two and a half games back of the 10th spot for that very important play-in tournament, which could lead to an ultimate postseason berth. They took down the Dallas Mavericks again, which is the game that Tyrese Halliburton injured his knee, but of course the MRI revealed some good news on that. However, he will be out for the remainder of the season as we already discussed. Barry, nobody's happier about a sweep of the Dallas Mavericks than you, right? Oh yeah, very, very happy to see that. You know, the story this week is uh, the Kings learned how to play some defense. And the Kings, you know, they got to the basket. They stopped settling for contested jumpers and, and they just basically attack, 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 which is, it's uh, interesting to say that without here in Fox, they actually got to the basket more, but uh, you know, effort and uh, consistency and, and playing together, you know, it's really contagious. So very happy to see that. The first game of the week, last Friday, um, we took down the Lakers. I was very happy to see that victory. Tyrese Halliburton did start that game, posting 23 points, 10 assists, he did a great job filling in for De'Aaron Fox. But as I mentioned earlier, defense was the key. The Kings held the Lakers to only 18 points in that fourth quarter, and that is how they were able to come out with that victory. Um, then, they, then they played the Dallas Mavericks, another 30-point game for Luka Doncic. However, he was ejected late for arguing with the officials, his second technical of the game. Uh, I was very happy to see that. I know Marvin Bagley had a, a little uh, dunk over him where, where Doncic fell on the floor. It was pretty entertaining for us Kings fans to see that. Um, and you know, as you mentioned, the Halliburton injury, emotional roller coaster this week, but happy to get four W's. Um, we jump right into that Thunder game. The whole team played well this game. Um, you know, we, there was like four or five guys in double figures. DeLon Wright absolutely killed it. Four blocks, four steals in that game. He had a steal late and a bucket to seal it. And then on to the next game against the Pacers. Another six steal game for DeLon Wright. He is playing just incredible. My shout out goes to DeLon Wright this week. He is my king of the week. Over the last four games, he averaged 34 minutes per game, 15 points per game, six assists per game he's averaging over three steals a game and as i mentioned he had a six steal game and a four block and four steal game it is incredible what the kings are doing calvin yeah i couldn't agree more with you about delon wright he is my mvp of the kings for this week for sure he stepped up so big at a time when the kings absolutely needed it most without fox and halliburton for a couple of those games um, but I am going to shout out Marvin Bagley. I think what he has done since he's returned, you know, missing all that time, all speculation about is he going to be a Sacramento King in the future? You know, is he worth the number two overall pick? I'm sure he has heard it ad nauseum for so long at this point. And all he's done is just come out and play. And he's played very, very well. Had over 30 points, 31 against Indiana. And he's playing minutes. You know, one of the things we talked about earlier in the year was the fact that Luke Walton wasn't playing him. 
uh, big minutes or you know in the fourth quarter late in games he played over 30 minutes in each of these three games since he's returned despite the addition of Damian Jones and Metu playing well recently also so that's very very encouraging for the Kings yeah, and, and with Metu out the past two games with an injury, it was awesome to see Marvin step up. As you mentioned, 31 points, that's one shy of his career high. Over the last four games, he's he's averaging 19 and 10. He's almost that 2010 guy that all the Kings fans have been waiting for. Um, I watched the, the uh, post-game conference with uh, Luke Walton and he was just ecstatic talking about Marvin and, and the leaps that, and, that he's made this season. I also you know, want to give a little shout out to Buddy Heald too. Buddy almost had a triple-double this week. Um, he also had another 27-point game. He didn't shoot well earlier on, um, but you know the Kings are playing well. Um, they're playing like a team and they're getting wins. That's right. We'll be right back and we'll start breaking down a very, very important game tonight against San Antonio at Golden One Center. Indiana with a two point lead. Heel. With a lead pass over the head. A huge home game tonight for the Sacramento Kings against the San Antonio Spurs. This game could be the Sacramento Kings season. It is their most important game so far, and if they win this game, they will move within one and a half games from that elusive 10th spot. Yeah, the playoffs start tonight for Sacramento, really. Uh, this is a very, very big game. Uh, the Spurs come into this game kind of reeling. They're on a five-game losing streak right now, and they've had a, a pretty tough schedule as of late. So real golden opportunity for the Kings at Golden One Center. Um, to me, the key to this game, if De'Aaron Fox does not play for another game, it's going to be DeLon Wright defending DeJounte Murray. Wright is absolutely up to the task. We've talked a lot about his defensive capabilities uh, in general, but De DeJounte Murray is a very, very talented player, similar skill set to De'Aaron Fox, and the two of them are always a good matchup. So I'm, I'm really going to be keying in on that particular matchup for this game tonight. Uh, and we'll see if the Kings can pull it out. Yeah, no Trey Lyles, no uh, Derek White tonight for the Spurs. Uh, we're still not sure whether Deer and Fox will end up playing in this game. Uh, yesterday, May 6th, marks 14 days since he was declared out 10 to 14 days due to COVID protocols. And the Kings haven't really been very transparent or, or even given a timeline in when we can expect Deer and Fox to be back. So hopefully he'll be able to suit up um, for tonight's game. However, if he is not, the Kings will have to do like they've done over the past two weeks, uh, just work together, play team ball, and try and get another W. Obviously, uh, this game is not an end all. The Kings do need to win this game. However, just winning this game does not mean that they will make the playoffs. They're still gonna be fighting with the Spurs and possibly the Pelicans for that elusive spot. But I did wanna mention that the Spurs uh, have seven games left this season, and those games are against the Kings, the Blazers, the Bucks, the Nets, the Knicks, and two games against the Suns, who currently hold the NBA's best record. So all very, very tough games for San Antonio. The Kings' schedule is much softer, and I'm very happy about it. That's right, they are, they do have a much softer schedule coming up, which is really going to help them out big time. Um, but this this game is very, very important in terms of the head-to-head -head matchup. They've split the season series so far this year, so this would be real big in terms of a tiebreak standpoint as well. Um, when we come back, we're talking about playoffs. Playoffs? That's right, playoffs. What's that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Welcome back. We are talking about the playoffs. It's no secret around the league, the Sacramento Kings have a streak going 14 consecutive seasons of missing the playoffs. This would mark year 15. Not something that Kings fans are proud of, um, but something to keep your eyes on and something to root uh, against break breaking. Um, this year is a little bit different. There is a play in tournament. Traditionally, the top eight uh, seeds of each conference make the playoffs. However, this year is a little bit different. Introducing two extra seeds, the ninth and the 10th, will play against seven and eight 
in the play-in tournament. Calvin will break down the rules on that shortly. Um, but it gives two additional teams in each conference a chance to make the playoffs. And the Kings are still alive. There are a few teams that are fighting for those spots. Um, the Warriors are currently 33 and 33 and they are fighting. Um, they will most likely make uh, that tournament. However, um, they could still miss it. The two teams that Kings fans need to keep an eye on. Uh, first one is we mentioned in the previous subject, the Spurs. And the second team is the Pelicans. And the Pelicans are one game ahead of the Kings right now. They play the 76ers tonight. We all know how good the Sixers have been this, this year. And it's going to get even tougher for the Pelicans. There's no Josh Hart. There's no Brennan Ingram. And Steven Adams is questionable for the game. So Kings fans, make sure you keep your eyes on that game tonight. If they lose and the Kings win, we will be tied with the same record. Yeah, so hopefully the Kings can get a little bit of help uh, from Philadelphia and from other teams as the, the season winds to a close. As we mentioned before, the Kings do have uh, the easiest schedule between those three teams, and it's really going to come down to those three teams for that last playing tournament spot. In case you're curious or wondering how the playing tournament works, the top six teams in each conference are automatically in. To the playoffs, teams 7 through 10 will then play in the play-in tournament. The 7th and 8th seeds will play each other. The winner of that game is automatically the 7th seed. The 9th and 10th seeds will also play each other. The winner of that game then plays the loser of the 7th and 8th game. And the winner of that final game becomes the 8th seed in each respective conference. So easy way to remember. 7 and 8 seed need two losses to miss the playoffs. 9th and 10th seed need two wins to make the playoffs. As you mentioned, Calvin, um, the Pelicans do have a tougher schedule through the rest of the season um, than the Kings. After tonight's game, they have five games left, and those games are against the Hornets, the Grizzlies, the Mavericks, the Warriors, and the Lakers. So significantly a tougher road for them uh, than the Sacramento Kings. And keep your eye on the Grizzlies too. They, the Kings play the Grizzlies twice in the final week of the season and they're playing New Orleans as well. So they could end up being the, the spoiler team for one of those three teams, whether it's San Antonio, New Orleans, or hopefully not our Sacramento Kings. But we're going to take it one game at a time. We got to beat the Spurs tonight. Hopefully another big performance from Marvin Bagley. And we're going to take a quick break and jump right into Marvin when we get back. Can't describe how I'm feeling. I just sit back on lay like, wow. wow. Ain't had no shine now. We live in I smile like look at me now. Four games back from Marvin Bagley and four wins for the Sacramento Kings. Marvin Bagley has been on a tear since returning from that left hand injury. He is averaging 19.5 points per game and eight rebounds per game over the last four. He is playing great. He is happy. I watched his uh, post-game press conference after the victory against the Pacers. He was smiling from ear to ear. He said he just loves this team. He loves these new guys. And he said that, that we're ready, we're competing, and, and he's happy to be here. Yeah, you have to feel really, really happy for Marvin Bagley, who's been through so much in his really short career to miss a, a bunch of time again after all he's heard is that he's injury prone um, and then to come back just ready to play you know that's the, the most important thing the numbers have been great and he has played better uh, than what i think anyone would have expected but just the fact that he came back with the right mindset and and is ready to go right from the beginning was really really encouraging to see and i also thought it was very um you know very good to see that despite not having De'Aaron Fox or Tyrese Halliburton, guys that I feel like Rashawn Holmes and Marvin Bagley both uh, you know, use in, within the course of the game to make the game easier on themselves. Um, you know, when you have a great point guard or even two great point guards like the Kings do, it makes the game easier for big men. And Marvin Bagley has really played well despite not having those guys there. Um, he's really played efficient. He shot the ball very well. Despite that one game against the Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, he was above 50% from the field in all the others. And he, he has really, really performed um, better than the Kings could have expected. And he's been 
very instrumental in trying to bring them back you know, into this playoff picture here at the end of the season. Yeah, it, it's been no distractions from Marvin. It's been hard work, it's been dedication, and it's been uh, letting his play on the court do the talking for him. As you mentioned, uh, you know, starting point guard, backup point guard, both out um, due to injuries. There's been other guys on the team stepping up. Buddy Heald has, has really um, taken it this week uh, as far as you know passing the ball more he almost had a triple double in one of the games this week and seeing his chemistry with with marvin uh you know begin to blossom is, is pretty exciting as a kings fan um, also watching you know just marvin and uh rashawn holmes playing together and moving around on the court and and obviously delon wright has been playing incredible had a couple great passes to marvin bagley um, but for me, it just it looks like Marvin is, is playing more freely out there. He's he's not forcing things. He's he's not trying to do too much. He's playing within himself. He's getting to the basket more, and uh, it, it's really working out great for him. So we're gonna take a quick break. We've seen some really impressive dunks here tonight. Turnover by Basley. Sacramento on the run out and the reverse layup good. The biggest difference in this week's Sacramento Kings team has been defense. Over the last three games, they have not allowed an opponent over 100 points. And their fourth game against the Lakers, uh, they allowed uh, only 106 points. So the Kings are definitely getting much better on defense. Uh, when watching uh, Coach Walton's uh, post-game press conferences, he uh, basically talked about communication. The guys are talking, they're trusting each other on the floor, and the weak side help is coming over um, at the perfect time. And, and as we have mentioned all episode long, DeLon Wright, when you are getting steals, when you're jumping passing lanes and, and getting your hand on the ball or, or tipping the ball, uh, it just opens up all sorts of different different options. Yeah, it's contagious, that, that type of play. And, and De'Aaron Fox brings that type of energy night in and night out as well. Um, but I think if you have other people uh, you know, who are stepping up in times of need like that and playing with that same sense of urgency, it really permeates its way throughout the entire team. Um, some of this week's effort you know, was definitely better effort on defense and, and more sense of urgency, all that stuff. Uh, part of it was just they, they got some opponents who really struggled shooting as well, which always helps. Um, you know, the Oklahoma City Thunder only shot 35% from the field against the Kings. The Mavericks were 6 of 35 from 3 in their game against Sacramento as well. Um, so, you know, some of that is better rotation, better communication, and also some of it is just players missing shots, which you need a little bit of luck like that if you're going to be a good defensive team in the NBA as well, because these guys are so good on offense. Um, I do really like the fact that the Kings won the battle inside and in paint points in almost all four of these games. The Lakers were the only game that they didn't uh, score, outscore them in the paint, which you wouldn't expect them to against the Lakers anyway. Uh, but that's a really key stat for me, I think, and part of that is getting Marvin Bagley back and having him paired alongside with Rashawn Holmes. Um, they have their full array of weapons now inside, and, and it's really helping Sacramento. Yeah, and, and just to mention real quick, uh, that Pacers game, the Kings only shot 25% from, from three-point range uh, in that game, and they were still able to come out with a victory. And, and that's simply because they're getting to the basket, they're taking easy shots. A uh, huge game by Marvin Bagley, 31 points. So the defense is stepping up. And, you know, as we mentioned earlier in this season, the Kings didn't have much of a bench or, or much depth. So adding all these additions at the deadline has really helped them uh, help, it's just helped them survive some of these uh, injuries to star players. You know, the Kings will give up points. You just have to consi continue to be persistent about that. Welcome back. As we mentioned earlier in the show, the Kings were without three of their biggest contributors for this week, almost in its entirety. No De'Aaron Fox, no Tyrese Halliburton, no Harrison Barnes, and it did not matter because they had some big time performances from some secondary role players as well as the return of Marvin Bagley. Uh, to me, this is really all about DeLon Wright though. I was so impressed with his play this week. We talked about it, the statistics that he put up, but having a guy like DeLon Wright 
on your team for situations just like this when your starting point guard is out and your other point guard, your backup, uh, or even at sometimes your starter also goes down with an injury. You have a guy who can play defense, who can run a team, and he showed that he can score as well this week. He really, really came up big for Sacramento. 10 steals in the last two games, both games that he started for Sacramento. I think he brings uh, veteran leadership to this team. He really helped corral the Kings, get them together, uh, and keep them focused You know, throughout this stretch when they were missing three of their best players, if not their three best players. Yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about DeLon Wright and what he's, what he's brought to this team. Uh, but, you know, DeLon has been great, but the Kings are the ones that were responsible for identifying him and bringing him to this organization. He was, was kind of lost with the Detroit Pistons, not winning, not playing well, not really doing too much. The Kings, um, they're analytic driven now. So whatever formulas and stats they're running, they're doing a great job because they really identified an awesome piece that's really helped contribute to this team. And not just DeLon Wright, they brought in Mo Harkless. He has played phenomenal this week. And Terrence Davis, both of those guys um, ended up scoring double digits this week against the Thunder. Justin James, I also saw him step up and have another double digit scoring game. So it's, it's really been a team, uh, a team week. And that's what happens when your best, you know, two, maybe three players are out is the rest of the team needs to step up. And the Kings have simply done that. Yeah, without a doubt. It was really a total team effort from Sacramento this week. And that's what it is going to take uh, for them to get into that play-in tournament here in these last few games of the regular season. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> Welcome back. We're ringing the bell. It's time for cowbell questions. Thank you guys out there for your submissions. It's been so great all season long to hear from you out there as our fans and as Sacramento Kings fans. If you have questions that you'd like us to answer on next week's show, you know the drill. Write it down in the comments section below this video and hashtag it cowbell questions. Only one question this week, so it's short and sweet. Uh, but we'll get right to it here. Let's get that question from the announcer. With Fox and Halliburton out, should the Kings sign Isaiah Thomas? Thanks very much, King Edward, for your question. Uh, to me, Isaiah Thomas is not somebody that I would sign if I was the Sacramento Kings. Thomas has always been a scoring guard. Uh, he's never really truly regained that form of his near MVP season back in Boston. He's played for six different teams since the start of the 2017 season, really hasn't stuck anywhere, hasn't found a home. I, I don't think that it would make a lot of sense for Sacramento to sign him for a playoff run uh, because he's a liability on defense. Teams could really take advantage of him, particularly in a postseason situation. And if the Kings are to make the playoffs, they're for sure getting De'Aaron Fox back. They're going to have DeLon Wright and Terrence Davis. And depending on how far they go, who knows when Tyrese Halliburton could be available as well. So adding a guy like Isaiah Thomas would only clog up that rotation, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Calvin here. Uh, I've been a huge fan of Isaiah Thomas. Uh, he's a pizza guy. I loved watching him with the Kings. Uh, just, you know, his story is incredible for a guy that is the very last in the draft his whole life he's been told that he's too small and just to see how much he's accomplished in the NBA is, is simply incredible but you know unfortunately I don't see a place for him to fit in with this Kings team um, his best attributes are scoring this team does not have any issues scoring uh, they have issues with defense um, obviously this week they didn't have issues with defense but unfortunately, I, I think Isaiah Thomas um, would create too many problems for them on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, but ultimately, for me, it really depends on what's going on with De'Aaron Fox. 
You know, I know he tweaked his ankle like a day or two days before uh, the COVID protocol thing happened. They said he was okay, but we really haven't heard much about him. So if he's coming back uh, tonight or, or in the next couple games, I think the Sacramento Kings will be just fine. Um, but if, if he ends up being out any longer, then maybe they will need to sign somebody. But I, I don't know if Isaiah Thomas is, is that guy. Thanks again for your question. And we look forward to answering questions on the next episode of the Royal Report. We're going to put a bow on this episode when we come back as the Kings look to put a playoff bow on the last week of the regular season. Thank you all for joining us on this week's show. Four games this week, as we mentioned, tonight's game is huge for the Sacramento Kings. We need to get a victory. Against the, um, against the Spurs, and then we have two games against the Oklahoma City Thunder and a game against the Grizzlies at the end of the week. All four games are huge. They are very important for the Sacramento Kings. I, for one, will be watching every minute of every game. I hope you will too. Calvin, what game are you most excited for this week? I'm most excited for all of them. I mean, we mentioned it before, the, the playoffs really start right now for Sacramento. It's a must-win mentality every week. It's kind of like that quote from the Waterboy, last game of the season, can't hold anything back now. It, every game, they've got to have a huge sense of urgency going into it. It's going to be very exciting to watch um, You know how all the playoff seeds shake out as there's a lot of teams that could do some shuffling here in the final week of the regular season. Thank you all again for joining us on this week's show. We'll be back next Friday with another episode of the Royal Report and more coverage on your Sacramento Kings. I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend and enjoy a week full of Sacramento Kings basketball. Go Kings. Go Kings. Thanks, guys.